A hedge, by definition, is two positions. One, the underlying exposure, and two, the hedge instrument. Therefore, all hedges attach with basis risk. However, the important component of basis risk, or the true source of basis risk, is the un unexpected component. It is the unexpected strengthening or unexpected weakening of the basis that constitutes the true basis risk. In order to illustrate basis risk, I'd like to imagine that we are an industrial manufacturer of some kind who uses copper as an input. So we purchase copper. Today is March 2018, and I'd like to just imagine that we have a plan to purchase copper in the future. Let's say near the end of the year in November of 2018. And conveniently, let's say we want to purchase 25,000 pounds of copper. I say conveniently because that is the size specification of a single contract, a single futures contract for copper. And the price of the copper, I'm assuming today, the spot price is $3.60. That's a little higher than it actually is today because I just wanted some round numbers in my outputs here. So... If I show three different scenarios here for the price, we can look at what we could call the unhedged cost. Price Spot price today is $360. let us go forward several months under three scenarios, and if the price is $3.60, then when we go to purchase that copper in November, we'll be paying $3.60 multiplied by, that's $3.60 per pound, multiplied by 25,000 pounds, and then our, our, so our cost for the copper in the future in November will be $90,000. If the price goes down, that'll be good for us and we'll only pay $3.20 times 25,000 pounds or $80,000. On the other hand, here is a jump in the spot price up to 460, which exposes our price risk such that our unhedged cost will be 115,000. And so that illustrates the price risk that we are exposed to when we have the plan to buy the commodity in the future. And so what I have here are the net cost under a long hedge. If we have a plan to purchase a commodity in the future, then the appropriate hedge for us is a long hedge. It's called a long hedge because we would take a long position in the futures contract. And that is to say a promise to purchase the commodity at the predetermined price. So I'm going to assume here that it's a December's futures contract. And the reason I do that, I make the futures contract a little bit, uh, a little bit after when we plan to purchase the actual commodity so that we can close out the contract rather than let it expire to maturity and would be forced to take delivery. So we close these contract out as well over 90% of futures contracts are closed out on a cash settlement. Okay, so I'm assuming that today the futures price, the December contract futures price is $4.05. And then I have that illustrated here uh, just in a straight line, right? You can see spot price is about three sixty, dollars and the December futures price today is $4.05. Okay, so that's upward sloping, and that's a we could call that a normal curve, or technically we call that a contango. Okay, now the basis calculation is right here. The basis is simply the spot minus the futures price. So in this case, three dollars and sixty cents minus four of five is negative forty-five cents. And when we have a normal or contango forward curve we should get a negative basis because the forward price, the futures price, is above the spot price. Um, now, under these three scenarios, I show the net cost of the long hedge. First here, in sort of the baseline, again, under all of these, I have an unchanged, an assumption of unchanged term structure. I'm just changing the spot price. So here in the first except here in the first baseline, the spot price has not changed. So I have a spot price of 360 that does not change. And then we get to November and the shape of the term structure is unchanged. So the forward price is 
$3.65, or the, the December futures price is $3.65. So you can see here, as we approach maturity, the unchanged term structure naturally implies that the futures price is declining as it converges on the spot, on the spot price. Okay, so we get to November, and then we close out the futures contract, and then what is the net cost under our long hedge? Well, we pay $90,000 for the commodity, 360 per pound multiplied by 25,000 pounds. And then what about our futures contract? Well, because of the unchanged term structure and the futures price converging toward the spot, the futures price here goes drops from 405 to 365. That's a loss of 40 cents per pound multiplied by 25,000 pounds is a loss on the futures contract of $10,000. So we paid 90 for the commodity. We lose 40, we lose 10,000 on the long futures contract for a net cost of 100,000. In the second scenario, okay, I show again, unchanged term structure, but now the spot price declining. And so spot price, let's say, declines all the way down to $3.20. Then the cost of the commodity to buy the copper will be $80,000. And what about the futures contract? Well, it dropped from four hundred five all the way down to three twenty-five. dollars The loss on the futures contract is $20,000. So although we pay less, we're losing more. We pay less for the commodity. We're losing more on the futures contract. That gets us back to... 100,000, 80,000 on the commodity, 20,000 loss on the futures contract, net cost for the long hedge, 100,000 also. What about if the spot price increases? So here I have spot price jumping, right, from 360 all the way up to 460, but unchanged term structure. So the futures price is 465. This time, the cost of the commodity has dramatically increase for us as it did under the unhedged scenario where we pay 115,000 for the copper however this time the whole point of our hedge is made real or the we realize we reap the benefits of the hedge in this scenario because the spot price the the futures price I'm sorry the futures price increases from 405 to 465 that's a 60 cent gain and so there is a profit on the futures contract of 50, 15000 which nets against the cost of our commodity and again brings our net cost to 100000 So under this scenario where the spot price increased, this shows or this justifies our hedge. It's why we did it. We're exposed to price risk. But you'll notice under the unchanged assumption of unchanged term structure, our net cost here was the same regardless. Effectively, we're able to lock in on a net basis the cost of the co of the copper in the future at one hundred thousand dollars. Okay, so then with that with that given, I can actually illustrate the point of basis risk, and this is from John Hall, and where the point is that the base the the true source of basis risk is due to the unexpected component. So that is specifically the unexpected strengthening or weakening of the basis. In each of these three scenarios, notice the basis strengthened from 45 cents, I'm sorry, negative 45 to negative five. So that was an increase or we would call a strengthening of the basis. However, it's an, an entirely expected strengthening on the basis. So our hedge, in terms of predicting our cost, can be perfectly anticipated. Now I'll show you unexpected strengthening, what that looks like. And to, and to show unexpected strengthening, what I need to do is uh, liberate from that assumption of an unchanged uh, forward curve. And so here again, just for comparison, I'm going to retain that first scenario here where the term structure is unchanged. But then I'll go here to the second scenario where you'll notice 
we start here with a contango, but as we go forward in time, the forward curve inverts. So technically we'd call that contango shifting into backwardation or just inversion. And that's illustrated right here where the spot price decreases. So the cost of our commodity goes down to 310. And so the cost to purchase the commodity in November is less. It's 77,500. However, because we have here an inversion where the futures price dropped more than the spot price, um, the futures con price, the December futures price is $3. That is a loss of $1.05 per pound or 26,500 on the contract. Adding that loss to the cost of our commodity gives us a net cost of 103,750. And you'll notice that's 3,750 greater than the 100,000 that we might have planned for. So the point here is that we had we had strengthening from negative 45 in the basis to plus 10, but it was the the component of unexpected strengthening that in particular hurt us with additional cost. And so similarly, that would apply even if the spot price increases, right? The spot price increase again was the point of the justification for the hedge. But so here, spot price goes up to 460. Uh, cost of the commodity is negative. Um, the cost of the commodity is 115,000, 460 per pound times 25,000 pounds. The future, the December futures price, and the December futures price in November is increased to 450. But as the contango actually shifted to backwardation, the futures price didn't increase as much, such that our futures. Uh, the gain per pound on our futures price is only 45 cents or in total 11,250 such that our net cost, see our hedge here didn't offset as much as we anticipated and we're back to the same amount, 103,750. But the conceptual point is that unexpected strengthening in the basis um, hurt us as because we're the long hedger. Okay, so that means that, under my final scenario, that means that if we're a long hedge, unexpected weakening of the basis is going to help us. And you can see that's illustrated. Again, I have here same that same uh, prior assumption of unchanged forward term structure. But under this scenario now, spot price is do dropping, but the contango is steepening. And so when we get to November and purchase the commodity for $3.20 per pound, that's a cost of 80. But the futures price has dropped from 405 to only 340, such that the loss on the futures contract is 65 cents per pound. And so our net cost is 96,250 or 3,750 less than the $100,000 net cost we might have planned for. So what we had here is an unexpected weakening of the basis, right? Notice the basis did increase. The basis did strengthen from point four, negative 45 to negative 20. However, we expected it to go to negative 05, negative 5 cents. So the, there is an unexpected weakening of the basis to negative 20 cents that actually helps us. And then in the final scenario here, where the spot price increases to 475, such that the cost of our, just the raw cost of the commodity is 118,750, the futures price gained even more than the spot price. So the futures gain here, where the December futures contract price goes all the way up to 495 means we have a future gain of 90 cents per pound or fully 22,200 22,500 
such that the hedge actually, it over hedges for us and brings our net cost here also to 96,250 or again, 3,750 less than the 100,000 we planned for. So again, what we had here is the unexpected weakening of the basis in the sense that we expected the basis to go to negative five, but it unexpectedly weakened to negative 20 cents per pound, which benefited us because we're the long hedger. And so that's really a illustration of the impact of unexpected strengthening or unexpected weakening of the basis to us as the long hedger. Thank you.